Back at the headquarters, all the rangers gathered to attend their usual banquet, and they even brought their right-hand subordinates to stand as witness. Yumeko came in late, and this infuriated the Blue Ranger, who demanded for an apology. However, she talked down to him and insulted his pride, causing him to go ballistic and had to be stopped by a magical dragon. This show is starting to sound weird and corny. Before the situation escalated, the Red Keeper took charge and forced an apology out of Yumeko. He then revealed how his divine artifact was stolen and was unable to transform back without it. The rest of the Rangers were taken aback and couldn't believe what they were hearing. Just then, his right-hand man started blaming him for what happened and made a huge scene asking him to abdicate the throne. The Red Keeper played along and agreed to stepping down and chose him as the next successor. While this nobody started rejoicing, Susei knocked the wind out of him and continued to bash him in. What the hell just happened? Meanwhile, the Blue Keeper went to the scene of the accident and tried pulling off some serious detective moves. He decided to search inside the fortress while his lackey searched the town for any trace of Dee's whereabouts. However, Dee was trying to recover deep within the forest. It seems he used the dynamites to cancel out the divine artifacts attack. Quite the bold move. That's when he met Hibiki, who took him to the cave and asked to work together. After pulling out a first aid kit, Dee started losing it and acted like a total imbecile. Even so, he took Hibiki's advice and healed his injuries in a jiffy. His powers were truly extraordinary and would have been OP had it not been for the divine artifacts and the rangers. Without hesitation, Hibiki started narrating his past and how his dad was his mentor who taught him everything. The day the monsters invaded Earth, Hibiki took it upon himself to protect his sister who made fun of his ranger obsession. It wasn't just her either. Even his parents hated their guts and considered them barbarians. One day, inside the church, a monster descended and evaporated everything in sight, including his parents. His sister was crushed underneath the rubble, and that was the day he dedicated his life to becoming a ranger. Deep down, Hibiki was actually a good guy who was given awful cards. These guys started complimenting one another and decided to work together. Upon seeing the lackey the Blue Ranger sent, Hibiki took him deeper into the forest and away from the cave. But upon realizing the betrayal, he was about to be beheaded had it not been for Dee's timely intervention. Dee started making fun of them and made it seem like he was the final villain. The lackey cried and unlocked his divine artifact replica, which was as strong and accurate. This spelled disaster for Dee, who was about to get sliced like Swiss cheese. The forest was in shambles and Dee managed to rob the replica. However, it burned his hands since the power was too much to handle. He ended up making a run for it and held Hibiki hostage. Left with no option, the lackey surrendered, but things took a drastic turn when Hibiki grabbed the replica and threw D off the cliff. Whoa, was that D? This guy is impressive. Elsewhere, Yumeko was stopped by the Pink Ranger and her lackey, who proposed helping out the Red Team. However, she refused and was confronted by the Pink Beauty, who gave her some stern words. Meanwhile, the real Hibiki bid D good luck on his journeys up ahead. The following day, D got up feeling a bit tired and still injured, it seems. This really annoyed him, and he kept on seeing flashbacks of Hibiki's past, where the monster who attacked the church was vanquished by the Blue Keeper. The real Hibiki then told him how the rangers were nothing like he imagined, and upon trying to blow the whistle, he was almost captured and killed. That's the reason he wanted D to take his place and succeed in his mission, since he failed. This reminded D of his own past and agreed to his terms. Back in the present, he accidentally broke Hibiki's laptop, which had vital information necessary for the mission. He tried getting it fixed, but the IT guy told him to give up and handed him some flyers to distribute. As D went back, he met up with Yamato, who seemed like good friends with Hibiki. He revealed how they were heading underground until their training was done, and this clashed with D's plan, who didn't have the opportunity to infiltrate their base and uncover their secrets. Yamato kept fantasizing about being a ranger and took him to the cafe where he met the beautiful amateurs. These girls were popping, but the rest of his comrades acted and sounded weird. They were up to no good, and a douchebag named Kai threw him off. It seems Hibiki was getting consistently bullied, but Dee didn't care about any of this. All of a sudden, he met Hibiki's sister, Cesera. Is every girl in this show super hot? Upon running to his room and opening the closet, 
he met another fighter monster who insisted on letting her out and almost blew his cover. The fighter monster was in love with him, it seems, and Dee decided to reveal himself before things got out of hand. The fighter refused to announce her name, and his sister kept on knocking non-stop. He finally let her in, and she gave him some apples before leaving. The cute monster told him to hurry things up, and Dee was feeling overwhelmed, especially since Cicera refused to leave his side. I mean, you can't blame the poor girl. She simply wanted to spend some quality time with her brother. No harm, no foul there. She then told him to quit the rangers and live out a peaceful life, since she didn't want to see him get hurt. As she went out to take a phone call, the erratic, horny monster got out and started attacking him since he was a remnant. Monsters who succumb to the rangers will and refuse to fight back. She, on the other hand, was one of the OG monsters who never backed down and went into hiding. She started criticizing him for his cowardice and took the opportunity to slice her head and stuff her back in the closet. After his sister returned, she continued to threaten him, and this backfired, since this was no longer the poor Hibiki she knew. Hold up, was Cicera the Pink Ranger? Why was she in the wheelchair then? And why did she hide her powers from her brother? None of this makes sense, but one thing's for certain, she certainly was a powerhouse. Meanwhile, Dee was inside the monster simulations, where he saw the trainees ganging up and killing his fellow brethren. This gave him an idea of how they acted and helped him plan accordingly. The training was over, and they were told to prepare for tomorrow's final exams. Hibiki got into an argument with the douche and went back to his room feeling infuriated. He called the monster Ekex and started chatting with her nonchalantly until she threatened to kill him if he slipped up. Yikes, this girl is scary. Everyone was ready for the exam, and they met up in parking lot where they were debriefed. The pink were support specialist, the green were stealth combat, yellow were central intelligence, blue were teamwork, and red were in charge of offense. The monster extermination squad. They had to defeat five monsters who were going to be rangers and possessed a key they had to steal from them. Oh wow, this was going to be impossible. He gave them three days and bid them good luck, since they'll need it. Hibiki was grouped with the douchebag, and they instantly started disagreeing about everything. Kai was the narcissistic type who cared only about himself. Soon after, their opponent, Yumeko, popped up and gave them a head start to run. However, Shun boxed them in and told them to surrender while they could. Oh man, this was about to turn into a bloodbath. Just then, Hibiki made a run for it while Kai was facing off against Shun. He talked a big game until he got his ass handed to him on a silver platter. Would you look at that? Shun was no joke. He even caught up to Hibiki and told him to prepare for a world of pain. The fight ensued, and Kai used the chance to catch Shun off guard. Hibiki used a smokescreen to run away, but the pompous douche refused to run and went back for another round. Hibiki ran away like a coward while Kai experienced firsthand what it takes to become a ranger lackey. As he was getting his face rearranged and his spirits crushed, Shun was caught off guard by an onslaught of cars. Hibiki showed up and started talking down to them, which upset the monster rangers. While they engaged in a shootout, they used another smokescreen to pit the ranger monsters against one another. Prior to all of this, it seems Hibiki mimicked their looks and started attacking. These two were about to rip each other limb to limb while Hibiki told Kai to F off. I guess the douchebag got the karma he deserved. All the while, Shun was getting jumped left and right and was tag-teamed by the two duo. Even the ranger lady came by and took both off them out in a single swoop. She targeted Hibiki and was caught off guard by the rest of the trainees. They all quickly ran away and one of them decided to quit since this wasn't what she signed up for. One by one, they all went down like pesky flies and kept on throwing litanies left and right. Even the cuties were upset and that's when Hibiki saw XX running by. He quickly caught up to her and locked her in the closet. He then met up with Kai, who questioned his motive and ambitions. While fighting Shun, they realized there was only a single key, which entailed that only a single person could pass. This wasn't a matter of teamwork, rather, it was survival for the fittest. Meanwhile, the tech guy went to Hibiki's room and found XX. After realizing she was a monster, he told her he'd rescue her from this dungeon and promised to save her. Hibiki, on the other hand, told Kai about the boss monster incident prompting him to reveal his past as well. It seems his bigger brother was part of the ranger squad and got killed by one of the boss monsters in front of his eyes. 
That's when he vowed to bury them all, and his drive for vengeance clouded his judgment. Kai told him how this happened four years ago, instead of 13, which was the timeline D was aware of. This implied that the Rangers did not kill every last one of them and lied to their faces. This was remarkable news, however. The appearance of an actual boss monster in front of XX was even more spectacular. She called it her master and vowed to serve it diligently. His presence was truly terrifying, and this guy was a mixture of angels and demons. D was talking to himself in anticipation of the second day of the exams and found the Blue Ranger's right hand, who finished her quota and started chatting with him. He told her how this entire examination was cruel and how they never intended anyone to pass. She tried pitting him against Kai, and this adorable cutie was secretly a monster. Even so, her presence did not distract D, who went ahead to help Kai against Shun. They teamed up and took Shun's key, and it seemed the strongest among them formed a group to target each ranger one by one. What a devious strategy. Shun explained how this strategy was ideal, and Hibiki was appalled by their tactics. He was left with the Riff Raff, who decided to join hands and steal their keys. D revealed himself and convinced them to attack Yumeko, who had the only remaining key amongst the rangers. However, this wasn't going to be a cakewalk, since her barrier was something else. They were about to give up, since they stood no chance, and that's when Yumeko insulted Yamato and decided to give them her key just like that. Wait a minute, what just happened? Did she really just give up? Oh wait, she realized Hibiki was actually D. That woman was a serpent. Afterward, the Riff Raff joined hands and decided to take them all down, but had their keys stolen at the last minute. All the while, the boss monster was making his move. Meanwhile, the Riff Raff were being scolded, and without realizing it, D stole their key. As they protested, the rest of the gang showed up and told them how the bell didn't actually ring, and Hibiki's group used a decoy to trick them. Might as well fight fire with fire, right? They rigged the bell to ring before it was time and caught everyone completely off guard. Hibiki threw the ring towards Yamato and held off Kai in a one-on-one -on -one duel. Unfortunately for them, the bell rang, signaling Hibiki's victory. Elsewhere, Blue Ranger's right hand, Kamachi, saved a fellow member who got struck down in an instant. The boss monster looked down on her and tried persuading her to side with him and bow down. Using her divine artifact replica, she tried holding him down while Hibiki was praising his teammates. They all managed to agree, and the shorty started interrogating D about his identity. Afterward, they met up with one of their teammates who looked like he was on the verge of death. They tried motivating him, however. He was envious of the Pink Ranger's right hand. After they informed him that he was gone, our boy lit up and grew back his muscles in an instant. Now that they added one more team member, they might actually have a chance to pull things off. Everyone was feeling hyped until the shorty ran into the boss monster and a beaten up Kamachi, who looks like she's seen better days. The shorty came through and pushed her into the elevator. Does this guy seriously think he can take on a boss monster on his own? Well, his aspirations were surely admirable. Elsewhere, Yamato was looking to conspire with the other team. But wait, he tricked them and made a mockery out of them. Meanwhile, they found splattered blood and decided to destroy the boss monster on their own.